Can I sit right here? Or? Of course you are. Hi, Sherry. What are you doing? I figured it was an informality for the last one because it wasn't Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, Joe. I would have gotten one for you. Did you want to know about using paper? No, no, no. He was in the little little papers. He didn't see oh, something thick enough. Yeah. The packet's three pages thicker. We're going to call this meeting to order at 6.34 p.m. Mr. Crosby, can we please rise with the Pledge of Allegiance? Mr. Crosby, will lead us? Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Roll call, Mr. Russell. Council Member Lau? Present. Council Member Crosby? Here. Council Member Carter? No, it was out of order. I know it's hard, but right here, that's okay. <laughs> No, look at the order. Council Member Carter. I, I do, every time I sit up here. I'm president. Mayor Pro Tem Davis. I'm also president. Mayor Hepburn. I don't know. Yes, I'm president. Uh, we have a presentation tonight, Mr. Russi, is that correct? We do. Presentation proclamation recognizing the month of March 2022 as Women's History Month. And who will be receiving this? This will be Yvonne Gallegos. Yvonne Gallegos. Come and on. then you'll also have uh, Remy, who is up on the screen from Tri City, who is also with Cassie. So. I got it. I got it. I got your back. I just want to say no masks. Okay. It's great. What's your shirt saying? Wait a minute. That didn't sound too great. What did I say? No masks? Anybody here to LA County, thank goodness we're over this right now, and hopefully it continues this way. Can you move on? We at the City of Laverne, this is a proclamation where we, whereas American women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of our nation in countless recorded and unrecorded ways. Whereas American women have played a continued to play an economic, crucial, crucial critical, it's hard for me to turn this talk. To play a critical, economic, cultural, and social role in every sphere of the life of the nation by constituting a significant portion of labor force working inside and outside of the home. Whereas American women have played a unique role throughout the history of the nation by providing the majority of the volunteer labor force of the nation. Whereas American women of every race, class, and ethnic background served as early leaders in the forefront of every major progressive social change movement. Whereas American women have served our country courageously in the military. Whereas American women have been leaders, not only in securing their own rights of suffrage and equal opportunity, but also in the abolitionist movement, the emancipation movement, the industrial labor movement, the civil rights movement, and other movements, especially the peace movement, which created a more fair and just society for all. And whereas despite these contributions, the role of American women in history has been constantly overlooked and undervalued in the literature, teaching, and study of American history. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Laverne hereby proclaims March as Women's History Month. Thank you. of Women's History Month. Tonight we celebrate the contributions of women, past and present, to the city of Laverne. Women like Grace Hellman Miller, educator, reporter, and dedicated to service in many areas throughout Laverne. Laverne College honored Grace with their first Community Builder Award, stating, ever since you came to this community in 1902, you have given yourself completely and tirelessly to the influence which makes a community a worthwhile place to live. That's dedication. Also in our past, 
Margaret Young Bixby. In 1901, she circulated petitions among representatives of local communities of Lordsburg, Laverne, and San Dimas to establish a comprehensive high school, which had its first graduate in 1904. That's perseverance. I'd also like, time, like to take the time to acknowledge current women leaders in our community because for now this is Women's History Month. The women of today are the history of tomorrow. I'd first like to celebrate our two strong, brilliant, inspiring councilwomen that sit on the dais today. I'd also like to acknowledge our new Chief of Police, Colleen Flores. I might also like to acknowledge the University of Laverne President Deborah Lieberman. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge Sherry Best. Society <laughs> and also Leah Skinner, Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce. And speaking <laughs> with the Chamber earlier a little bit um, this morning. They assured me and they told me that really great news that the new new businesses within Laverne are sharply rising and they're mostly women owned, which is incredible. <laughs> and I'd also like to acknowledge Remy Hundle, who's on the call with me or on the call today, um, as the director of Tri City Mental Health Services. <laughs> Our different divisions. Um, thank you so much. And in closing, I just want to say we celebrate Women's History Month to remind ourselves of the accomplishments of women throughout the years to our culture and our society, whether it's from community service, science, politics, and education. It is a chance to reflect on the trailblazing women who lead the way, way for change. Thank you so much.
it's just a, it's a great month, so we should celebrate. Because without the women, we wouldn't be here, and uh, let's just not forget that. So we are here at their grace, and, uh, and I appreciate it every day, so thank you. <laughs> okay, let's go. other announcements? Yes, I do. Oh, we have some announcements here, I think. We have, uh, is this under public announcement? Danita, Ms. Bochan? I wrote it Gotcha, come on up. Just double check. Tomorrow, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors meeting has, is having a closed session to discuss litigation, but their next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, March 15th at 9.30 a.m. Their agenda has not yet been made public. On Wednesday, March 9th at 9.30 a.m., the Los Angeles County Public Safety Cluster meeting has two items on their agenda pertaining to the youth justice. Item 4A is a board briefing from the Youth Justice Reimagined and Youth Justice Advisory Group. Item 4B is a board briefing of the Division of Juvenile Justice, Transition Committee, and Mr. Adam Bettino from Probation will be speaking. On Thursday, March 10th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., the Probation Oversight Committee of Los Angeles County will have their meeting. <clears throat> As of 4.30 this afternoon, the agenda had not yet been made public. The Probation Oversight Committee will have a special meeting on Monday, March 14th from 12 to 1.30. This is a meeting that has been added. It was not on their regular schedule and will discuss education. There's also additional, there was an additional meeting last Thursday and I believe these additional meetings are being added because the Board of Supervisors want to make a decision very soon and are requesting the committees involved to provide their reporting and minutes. The Laverne and surrounding city residents need to remain assiduous to the monstrous issue. On a happier note, on Saturday, March 12th, is spring forward, so do not forget to change your clocks ahead <laughs> before you go to bed that evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bochamp. And I will state that, um, and just to, to trailer on to uh, Danita, is the fact that um, the city's been real good about it. They've been notifying the city and on stuff that we don't even know about, and because uh, it, it's just, it's coming fast, and we must be diligent. We must be on top of this as a city. And to monitor, maybe not speak, but monitor. And I know it's difficult. We've all done these calls, and it's difficult. You can wait for two and a half hours, and they don't even know you're there being the probation or the, city, the county supervisors, but when you do get on, it's nice to have your, your moment, even if it's a minute or two or three, depending on what you're speaking on, but we must be diligent. This decision has not been made. It is going to be made soon, and we want to make sure that uh, our direction is uh, Barry J. Nidor, Los Pedrinos, and Capacity. I mean, we, and we've given the reasons why. We're not an NBC. We're a very generous city with the fact that we need to keep diligent on that. And I appreciate all the help from all of you that have been there, our rallies and stuff, but it's not over. So don't let your guard down, because the decision can be made real quick without us knowing about it. Kind of like SB9 and things like that. You know, so anyway. If I may, Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. on the uh, public safety cluster meeting, which is a staff-led meeting, it's uh, only of the deputy uh, directors of uh, the each district, that item four will be an update relative to the subject, so we will have staff that will be monitoring that as well, but. I would encourage the public to attend to hear what the update is. Yeah, that's a very interesting meeting because I do talk to nuts and bolts what's going on internally. So it's good to hear, and even if you do get a comment in. So. And are your dates on the uh, website up to date? What meetings will be coming up? And We're only putting the meetings that are relative to the subject matter, yes. not all of their meetings. So the public safety cluster, we did post that agenda today. So it went up this morning so the public can be aware. Um, there will not be any take action taken out of that because it's staff only, so I just want the public to be aware of that as well. And I thank you for the public for sharing. It's important that we all share. You know, social media is great, especially when stuff like this. It's if the city has it, let's share it. I know I've been pushing stuff out. Danita's been great. She finds stuff that we don't see and gives it to me, and it's like, we got, you know, Snoop Doggy Dog over there, so she's really pushing it closely. And we really appreciate it, though. Really do. <laughs> You like that, huh, Joe? <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. May, tell us about the library, sir. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, City Staff, Laverne residents. There's some good news. There's going to be some uh, changes in hours for our libraries. So starting March 15th, 
we are going to be open, um, we're still going to be open Tuesdays and Saturday, but instead of one evening, we're now, we will be open two evenings, Tuesday and Wednesday from 12 to 8. And the, uh, Thursday through Saturday, it'll still be 9 to 6. So just to let you know that we're more hours. Um, they've increased our capacity from 38 to 75, so it's not um, you know, holding people back, telling them that's not going to be an issue. Not that it was an issue in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's safe coming in. You'll have to wait. It, it's just that you have to you know, two or three times you have to do that, but mm -hmm. with, the, with the 75, it's not going to be an issue. And even even pre pandemic, we rarely ever had a situation where there were 75 <coughs> people in the building. Uh, when it, it did happen when we had a, a really uh, popular program, uh, but for most time. So this is not going to be an issue. So it's great that more people can come in. They can start sitting down on the, uh, all this, or all the furniture is out now, so people can sit down. Um, the book sale, uh, the Friends of the Liberum Library book sale, will reopen also on March 15th. So people can still come in, now purchase books, we're, start, we're clearing out space, and we're now starting to make, take donations from the community also. Um, let's see. Programming, it's still, we're still on hold because our media room, you know, we're hosting the staff at San Dimas Library because their library is closed right now, so we can't use it. So once they can, uh, once that works, <coughs> the library opens, then programming will resume at the library. Um, also, you know, I invite everybody, everybody to come. I mean, it's basically the same thing, just like it was pre pending pre-pandemic, the masks are still required this time, our department's still choosing to keep, the, keep them on, social distancing, uh, but with everything else that's going on, I suspect that's going to eventually go away also. I just don't know when. So hopefully I'm glad to be talking before you guys, not to have a words in masks, it's great. <laughs> um, regarding other programming, so uh, I know we don't have programming in library, but if you go to the county website, there's a lot of virtual programs that are available. So you can sign up and go to the videos from your home. So there's a lot of things that are being offered. So that's it. Thank you. I was by there the other day and I noticed all the employees coming out. It's just nice to see employees coming out of a business, you know, especially the library. There was yeah. quite a few people that came out. So, yeah. you know, kudos. I think more people will start coming back in as this masking and the pandemic kind of. Uh, one thing I forgot, there's still, we still do have sidewalk service available to people who want to use that, utilize that, uh, so that's still available. So, okay. So there's many ways you can check out and use the library. Can we put something on our website for that, please, to let people know that we will update our review hours? Great. And our, and our website will be also updated with new hours. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. Sherry Best. Jam. I am. I want us to go jamming with the LPHS <laughs> here. We have lemon marmalade and we have orange marmalade, homemade. We've harvested lemons and oranges for marmalade and your donation by buying a jar of marmalade will help to restore a 1938 international truck. Contact me to place your order and come to our sponsored events where we'll be selling marmalade as well as t-shirts and books about the bird. So I think it's time we all had a sweet treat. <laughs> but I would also like to announce two events coming up. The Laverne Historical Society on March 14th at 7 o'clock is hosting a Zoom presentation by the Claremont Wildlands Conservancy. This group has been instrumental in preserving areas in the foothills above Claremont and into Laverne for leisure and recreational use. Land preservation is part of our historic heritage. Everyone's welcome to this free event and the flyer with an active link to the Zoom meeting is on the events page of our website. I also have flyers on the side and uh, so please come attend. It'll be, it'll be very instructive. On March 19th, the Laverne Historical Society will join students from Benita High School as they sponsor, I think, their first car show. So the high school kids are doing a car show in the uh, parking lot at Benita High School from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we are so proud of the work they're doing to restore the 1938 International Truck. 
So come meet these young auto enthusiasts who are bringing this dream to reality. Hear about their accomplishments, drop by, and I have also put out flyers, and I have uh, posted those flyers on the city manager's website. So come avail yourself, and this is just the beginning of all the different events we're going to start having for the Historical Society. So I'm going to put these up here to, 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 to just look at them. Meyer <laughs> Lemon Marmalade. Excuse me, where's the toast lake? butter? Come on. And uh, they both say pucker power. I need samples, don't we? I, I, will, oh, say, oh. I will say, I have. How much a jar? $10 a jar. Okay. I will say they're the best. I have they that. are I the have best. blueberry, I have apricot, I have the uh, orange marmalade, and there was another one flavor. Pomegranate yeah. jelly, Everyone, apple jelly, they're lemon excellent. marmalade, orange marmalade. They're excellent. And apples. Apple cinnamon jelly. Ooh. There you go. All right. There they are. Feast your eyes. We have props. Any other announcements? Absolutely. Not public comment, but announcements. Okay. We will move to uh, consent calendar, Mr. Rossi. Any any bit bold? Any questions from council? No, and I'll make the motion to accept the consent calendar as presented. Second. I'll second it. Vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, all right, Bert. Thank you. Motion right carries. Mm -hmm. We have item seven, Mr. Russi. Other matters? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I will take this. Um, Back in December, as Council is aware, we did an initial presentation on use of ARPA funds. Um, at that point, it was uh, there were several comments about um, looking at providing a premium pay stipend for essential workers. It was not included in the staff's initial proposal, but Council had asked staff to go back and look at what could be made available. Um, staff did that, did research on what were the provisions under the Act, as well as looked at what some other cities were providing in the surrounding area. Um, and then with Council's help over two preceding closed sessions, we're able to establish the criteria that you see outlined here, as well as the uh, appropriate amounts to be provided, and I'll go through those in a minute. Um, what, is, what was required as part of that process was to meet with each of the represented groups, and get their concurrence before bringing something forward to council. I'm happy to report that all the groups have responded and are favorable in what is being provided by the city to each of the respective groups um, for consideration. Um, so with that, um, we would, with council's concurrence and the uh, approval tonight, we would then execute side letters with each of those groups. Um, and attach them to their respective MOUs just to live alongside that this um, provision of this stipend was being provided. Um, essentially what the, uh, the criteria is, um, is we establish two levels. The first is looking at the entire period of time that uh, we were in the major crux of the, uh, of the pandemic, which basically was from March of 2020 through June of 21. Um, any employee full-time or with some part-time um, criteria that worked a minimum of six months um, would be entitled to a full stipend. <coughs> and then any full-time or then um, a eligible part-time would be entitled to 50% of the stipend. Um, the stipend amounts that are being provided are essentially for sworn, would be 2,000 on the lower end, 4,000 on the upper end. All other non-sworn employees would be $1,500 or $3,000, depending on which criteria they fall in. Um, looking at this criteria, as well as the number of employees that would fall into the each group, the total amount estimated to be needed of ARPA funds is $520,000, um, which staff has looked at the initial proposal that we outlined for you back in December. And we feel there are a couple areas there. Specifically, there were a couple projects that we've identified that will be less on the capital improvement side, as well as um, the fact that the um, chamber has taken on the business grant program. We will not be requiring a, an additional administration by a community bank of sorts 
that those two savings will make up a majority of that. Um, as well as for the remainder, we would look at either the rehab program as well as the homeless engagement as shaving a couple dollars off of that to get to whatever the appropriate number is. So um, with that, what I would be looking for is council approval of the premium pay program, um, authorize staff to execute the side letters, appropriate the 520000 from the ARPA allocation that we've received, and then authorize the finance department to issue the stipend checks um, as allowed for under the criteria that's been established. That will answer any questions that you have. Council, any questions for uh, staff before we go to public comment? Yeah. We'll open up public comment. Does anybody have any comments? One there, I believe. Yeah, Was that seven? <laughs> oh, Mr. Gavinon. First of all, I just want to say I'm going to admit right now I'm not perfectly clear on how the allocation of funds is being planned. Um, I remember the meeting, but I'm not really sure that the clarity around how the money itself is being um, considered for allocation and what progress has been made in that planning process since that time. Um, it's just been, it feels like forever since that was brought up. Uh, in the conversation tonight, I might, uh, I might misunderstand it, but um, I feel that, you know, on behalf of some of the folks that are on the other side of the equation relative to how their, um, their monies did not come to them during these times, uh, I want to start by saying that I appreciate that. And everybody on our emergency services teams, but I'm concerned about clearing transparency around the allocation of the funds. Many in our community were economically affected by code closures of their businesses, and many did not have economic protection during those times. Um, please consider how this transparency that you're talking about, where this money's going to go, who's going to get it, how much is left behind it, that you know, the community should really um, at least uh, know that, that everything that can be done to consider their side of the equation is also considering the allocation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kavanaugh. Anita. As Mr. Gavaldon said, I, I know the staff works hard. We see the presentations that they present at these meetings, and, you know, it's a thankless job because they're behind the scenes. But um, I'm in agreement with Mr. Gavaldon that I think that the money that is in this recovery program from federal government needs to be addressing other issues that are more important, and then whatever money is left that they can then turn to this, you know, to council and say, okay, we have X dollars left. Let's, you know, give the stipend to the staff that were forced to work from home or had their hours cut or their salaries cut just to, to save their jobs. But I think there are more pressing, more important issues that are facing the city and the residents of the city that should be addressed first. And there was a program at one time where Laverne elderly residents could do like a, and I don't remember what the monetary value was, but it was like a one-time assistance, whether like with those winds we had, a tree fell on the awning and it could cut the tree down and have the awning replaced or, you know, minor repairs that didn't require permits and such. But there are many elderly residents on, on very strict incomes, and I think some of this money could be allocated towards that program, and I think that's something that needs to be considered. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bochamp. Any other public comment? We have anybody on? No. Last call for public comment. We're going to close public comment and bring up the dais. Mr. Russi, comments? Um, I, yeah, I'd like to. The fair okay. question that was asked about um, some of the other allocation and uh, what was identified back in December, and we are making uh, strides in that, um, was initially, and that presentation is still on our website, so everybody can go and look at that to see where those dollars were identified as a direction from council. In December, council had um, expressed the what we had outlined as a good path for those dollars. We are working to allocate those as we put the programs together, and I can give you some more specifics on that. Last meeting, or yeah, last meeting, you appropriated a million dollars to the business grant program, um, and so those steps are being taken. We met with the chamber this week. 
we expect to be able to advertise for that probably in April um, as opposed to what we were originally thinking is May. So those dollars will be put out in $10,000 grants up to $10,000 per business. Um, we did uh, allocate a million dollars to immediate operational needs at each of the departments, if you remember, identified things that weren't otherwise funded, um, but they were felt were things that were necessary for the benefit of their operation. Those specific issues are being worked through the mid-year budget process right now. Um, we had a shortfall of about $1.5 million in our capital improvement program for the five-year. We took $1.5 million and put it towards those identified projects. So our five-year capital improvement within the general fund projects is fully funded for these five years. Um, we put a million dollars towards outdoor improvements, um, which basically will be ATP level improvements, so active transportation things that need to be done, bike lanes, trails, um, as well as then within our recreation and our parks. So some of that money will go to that and both uh, Director Igo and um, Yvonne Duran will be working to come back with a proposal. I know those dollars will be used. Um, we are putting about $500,000 into the housing rehab program, which was the one you were referring to that we had done before. We had abandoned that program years ago because we used to do it under redevelopment agency. We shifted it to CDBG. The restrictions on the fund just made it too impossible to get over that hill. We um, put out an RFP about two weeks. Uh, we got it back. Last week, we got the final vendor today, I heard. So I hope to bring that back to council the first meeting in April to allocate those dollars and put that program out there for the community. And then the last one that I'm working on is um, an, in, um, an enhancement of our homeless engagement um, with our police department as well as Tri-City Mental Health um, to um, be more relevant in the community and engaging with our homeless community. Um, to, to guide them into the services that we have available. So those are some of the things that we've identified and we're working behind the scenes to bring those forward. It's just, you know, you can only get so many things in front of you at a given time. So we'll, the housing rehab will come next. I hope to have the homeless engagement worked out for May, and then the other things will probably be as part of the budget process. And also I want to say that the, especially with the business assistance grants, when we did the CDBG money, you know that uh, Council Lau and myself were on that committee, along with staff, and the criteria was so tough. There was so much information they had to fill out and just to follow up. So a lot of people didn't do it, so we doubled down and went from the 5,000, was it the 2,500 to 5,000? And, and still, at that point, we're, we're hoping that this, that this business assistance grant is going to be fast and furious. The applications are going to come in at $10,000 each, which I don't know what business could use that, especially the smaller the businesses. But again, at the end of the day, too, there's businesses growing here every day, almost. I get a report from Spook who's publishing that, anywhere from 10 to 6 businesses per month. Yep. Per month. And it's like, this is great, you know. But uh, And also to the you know, that that $500,000 will, as we talked about, that's very important because that was something when I first got on a council. Walnut Avenue being one of the areas that was, you know, that was a tough area. We are trying to figure out how we could do it. And that between real development and CDBG, it was like, you tie your hands. This has less strings, which is really nice for the people that are going to need this. So, so I think all in all, uh, and as far as the employees, I think uh, I hear what you guys are saying, but uh, I think uh, uh, we factored all that into consideration, and our employees did an amazing job, kept everything open. I don't think any resident didn't get the information they needed to get. I think our police and fire, public works, you never saw anybody stop. There may have been a day or two when for a started, but. Uh, we believe that uh, appreciation to our employees was extremely important to retain our employees. We're not the highest paying city, but we're a really good place to work. And I think that's that's what we try to, our mantra here. You know, we, we strive for, for uh, the place to stay because we work in such a great place and our residents are so great, our schools are great, so not a bad place to live and not a bad place to work. So that appreciation, I think, across from council is the fact that we want to give them something to say, hey, this was rough, and it was rough for all of us, and so we were able to do that. But I mean, still, we put away a lot of money for infrastructure, a lot of money for people that are in need, a lot of money for the business assistance grants, which you know during the pandemic, we all kept our businesses alive. They would not be here unless for our community, servicing our businesses and takeout and our stores and you know everything that was here. We lost very few, very few businesses, and I say that's the city, that's our council, that's our community, our residents. We did a really good job. So. Anyway, sorry. Council, comments? 
Yes, I just wanted to. <laughs> you said a lot of what I was going to say. <laughs> but um, I appreciate the time we've all spent in staff's direction giving us ideas what we could do with the $7.6 million that we received. And it is on our website so you can see. And um, I just have always felt that our backbone is our city employees. The work that is done through this city is what makes it beautiful and attractive to people and safe. Um, during the pandemic, we had, it was a scary time at the beginning. You have police and fire that had to be first responders. That's their job. But they were putting their lives, their families' lives, it, because nobody really knew how bad this was in jeopardy, and, but they did their jobs. They went into homes, they went into mobile homes, taking care of people and transporting them, police handling homeless, having to touch one another, you know, and try to stay safe. And then even with our public works, you think about it, when they went downtown, I was so impressed with public works, how they went down there and they were, you know, right there, putting up the big, Bar barricades and um, closing down the streets so that our businesses could have, uh, you know, the restaurants could thrive. So it's just so impressive. And then the front office staff having to work, you know, so many businesses, you know, out there. The university, I know, a lot of them got to work from home. But, you know, we, you know, tried to do, you know, hours so that it was conducive to all the employees in the city to be able to come in and take care of business. So I just can't thank the employees enough. I feel this is a a, t a small token of the gratitude to say thank you for what they did for us during that terrible time. And they, I know they continue to do wonderful work, so thank you. Thank you, Councilmember <coughs> Council I agree. A <laughs> <laughs> few words. Councilmember Lowe. Ditto. <laughs> Councilmember Mayor Pro Tem Davis. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to add, because I, I agree with everything that's been said, that this consideration wasn't an e either or, and we really didn't want to put anyone last. We wanted to make sure that we were doing all the things that we could do as quickly as we could do to help invigorate the community again, which is why we immediately started working on the business, business support. Um, we looked at other areas. We looked at the individual support, which is the, the uh, housing refurbishment. Um, but we didn't want our employees to be last, so we wanted to make sure we did an and, and, and therefore we came up with this value for them because it's true, it, it, it takes a village, but the village also takes servers, and our city employees, sworn and unsworn, are all the servants of our city, and they're taking care of us, and we want to make sure that they recognize that we appreciate that. So this is very important. Ditto. But no, thank you to <laughs> make it real short. Um, I just want to thank, thank you to all of our employees. And, uh, uh, and as to Mr. Uh, Galadon's comment regarding the time frame, it takes time to do these things. It's not just a wave of one. And we did really go over it multiple times. And, you know, any, any anything like that, there's there's times where we have to dig into it and figure out what's best for everyone. And, uh, and, and finally come out to a solution, but I think uh, this is a great way to do it. It's a great appreciation for our staff, but it's also a great appreciation for our city, capital improvement projects, the needy. I think that, that business assistance grants, I think we're on the right road. And thank goodness we got this, because otherwise it, it's, it's, it would have been tough. But. So with that said, uh, I think we need a motion. I'll be happy to make the motion to approve the ARPA premium stipend program, authorize staff to execute side letters with representative employee groups, appropriate the 520000 from the city's ARPA allocation, and authorize the finance department to issue stipends as provided under the outline criteria. Second. Vote, please. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> A second. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, don't. There we go. Yeah, no. I, okay. Okay. <laughs> We, uh, I'm late. It's, it's like it's like Mr. Demille. I'm ready for my close-up now. I've just got to keep waiting. <laughs> Public comments and uh, oral communications. No, there's one item. One more item. Excuse me. I'm sorry. No. no, no oh, that was under. I'm not ready for it. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm waiting, and I'm looking. <laughs> Councilman Wait. Carter, I might have place. Can we take two? Agenda doesn't say that. Take two. Go back and try it again. <laughs> 
Any recommendations, Councilman McCarty, before I go to public comments? <laughs> Take two, go. Public comments and other communications. I have a couple cards here. I have uh, Danita Bochamps. She wrote one card. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's too late. Yes. Let Joe, Joe go first. Yeah. You want Joe to go first? You're always welcome at the podium, young lady. <laughs> I would like to point out uh, we're, we're now in darkness and our flag is to total darkness out there. The light. light that's on it only lights up the bottom of the pole. And I think that needs to be remedied. Thank you. Straight away. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Rossi. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Bochamp. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah, go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> You're making me do a two-step back. <laughs> okay, this is under public comments, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, just making sure. Um, I want to say thank you to the mayor and the council for recognizing March as uh, Women's Month. Um, as you said, none of us would be here without them. But to also um, thank... Uh, Ron Carter and Wendy Lau for being very a uh, vocal uh, uh, person to provide women to look up to. Many, many years was this a boys club, and it wasn't until, I believe, Donna Redman and, and another woman, but I can't remember her name, I apologize, but, you know, you, you definitely are paving the way for other women, encouraging us to get involved, to voice our opinions, and, and to really care, take our level of care about the city to a higher level, so I want to thank you for that. Um, I would also like to request that the council allow a modification for people that come and address you at the dais. Um, the people in the audience, um, not everyone is loud like I am, <laughs> so there are people in the audience who oftentimes cannot hear what the speaker is speaking, whether the microphone is not properly adjusted, but also when there are people on the Zoom meeting and speaking, we have a difficult time hearing. So I'm requesting that maybe some of this money uh, be allocated to some kind of a speaker system or we adjust the podium to the side so that our voice is actually facing the audience. But there are times where we cannot hear people that are speaking. And like last week with the presentation of Chief Nig and the gentleman that was on the Zoom was very difficult to hear. And that was a very important issue facing our city. So. That's something else. Um, lastly, the sidewalk repairs that are being conducted under the CDBG program are being done, but they're being done very poorly. Um, before that program uh, got re-implemented, the sidewalks that were repaired on Amherst Street, they, they used to break up the sidewalk, cut the tree root for the city trees, and then relay the concrete. This time around, the, the sidewalks are, are white, you know, concrete dries it and it's like a white color. They laid black asphalt to fill in the, the gap. And it has created an even larger trip hazard. So with the CGG program, they came out and they literally sanded it down. And so it's very rough, and, um, but it's still uneven. It's, it's still a safety issue. And I personally have one right in front of my house. But there are four others on my street that have the same thing done. So I'm hoping that, you know, especially with, it, it may not be costing the, the city money to, to, to conduct these repairs because this is a grant program. But some oversight or public works or somebody from the city needs to go and inspect the jobs that are being done because they're being done poorly. And, and it needs to be brought to the attention of the city but I do appreciate the efforts that are being put forth. So I know they're working on it, but a little bit more needs to be done. But thank you very much. Mr. I was on the line up there too. He's listening to this right now. So Mr. Yeah, Mr. but I might say that that may be the temporary work that's been done. When we do, CDBG is just for replacement, so they will pull out sections and replace it. So that may not be what is done in this area at this point. Um, so they may be coming back to do that later today. We'll check it out. Huh? Mr. Galdon. I guess I could say ditto and ditto. <laughs> um, Thank you for your comments. <laughs> that's, that's just for, 
I can back um, the day, so wait. I, I too wanted to recognize uh, uh, Women's Awareness Month. I live with, with a woman who I, I'm very proud of, and she's one of those movers and shakers. And she gets a lot of stuff done, and, and you guys know about her. Sometimes she's a pain in the butt. But, I mean, I, I'm saying it in, in, in a very... Is this you know, laundry airing time? <laughs> <laughs> Just all having a conversation? I hope it's going to take for my three minutes. Um, oh, you, you know, all right. But I, I think it is important to acknowledge that, you know, uh, with the speaking about Cassie and inclusivity, um, it really shouldn't matter, um, you know, what, what it is you identify as. We're, we're all just trying to get along together. And uh, sometimes we don't always agree in how we do it, but uh, there, are very, there are many women out there that are just amazing. Um, and I aspire to be uh, some of them um, sometimes in how they, they accomplish what they, they set out to do in amazing ways. And one of my favorite movies is Hidden Figures. And on the back, you know, back side of uh, uh, Black, Amer Black American Month, and now Women's Month, uh, it's a great movie, so I recommend it. Um, on, the, on a more business uh, note, though, um, I just wanted to bring up two things. One misunderstanding of, I think, my, my comment before. It wasn't intended to, to impart that there was any, um, you know, not appreciation for a city staff. It was merely the transparency in which decisions like this are made, where there's money involved, a lot of money, thank God, for the city and for everybody, but I feel like we could do a better job of keeping that in the light long enough so everybody gets the thought process and there is no questions about it. So I just wanted to close on that with that part. And then uh, the city business, I noticed in January and February that there was no newsletter. There was a newsletter in February that covered two months and I know we started doing that maybe a year or two ago and it just dawned on me that tonight there was all these announcements and all these weird things going on, but we, we skip a month. And I don't want Laverne to be skipping months. We have plenty of things going on here, and I think that we should look forward and make things happen if there's not things to really talk about that, that might seem significant like other months. Let's get something going here so there's always a newsletter every single month. There's always things to talk about. Keep the interest high with the city and not like keep people kind of waiting for it. You probably think, Bob, nobody reads my newsletter. I think a lot more people read it than you think. And I just want to let you know that and I would re really appreciate it if we kept one for every month. I think deserve, was Laverne deserves one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gavada. Anyone else for public comment? Yeah. Please. Oh. Oh. Ladies, it's, it's ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 no. yeah. You don't want to get in the middle of that one. Yeah. <laughs> I was okay with you. Terry's a gentleman. Yes, you go first. I will be quick anyway, just two uh, brief comments. I would like to take a moment to thank the Committee for Cultural Awareness and Social Inclusion, CASI, for researching and reminding us about the specially designated Heritage Months. It's an important reminder to our community that we're all important and we all belong. I want to give a special shout out to Yvonne Gallegos for doing a lot of the research and legwork. I know she works hard. She asked me some questions about things, and I was like, I don't know if I have to share this. You know? <laughs> but I really appreciate all the work she's been doing so um, we can receive these special proclamations. My second thing is I wanted to say thank you to our city council members. Lately, it seems like when it comes time for public comment, there are people that want to complain, they belittle our council members, and I don't agree with those people. I respect and I appreciate our council members. I think you all work very hard for our city, and you're doing a great job. I talk to plenty of other people out there in the community that agree with me. Um, so thank you for your time and your commitment to making Laverne the best that it can be. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Come on up. I have, I have a complaint. I have a suggestion. I was coming northbound on White Avenue the other day, or yeah, White Avenue to Arrow. And I, I know that Kiwit Civic, uh, Kiwit and uh, Parsons Joint Venture there is in control of all that. But for the second time, I got up there and I thought, why don't we have, when we come up to that deal, we, there's, the lights need to be refaced, quite frankly for this, and, and a temporary left turn lane 
on the second lane from the from the lane adjacent to the normal left turn lane to allow cars. As cars come up there, they stop, and you make the left turn lane, and then light stays green for north and south traffic, which there is none, except somebody goes up there and turn makes a U-turn and comes around and goes the other way on on their highway. So I was thinking that I don't know who's in charge of it, but I think probably the city. Uh, to rephase the lights for the duration of well, White Avenue is done, so I think it would just make the traffic flow a lot better. And I was going to write that, and then I had lunch with some friends, so I forgot about it, and we talked about the sidewalks and reminded me of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we could jog your memory, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Public comment. Mr. Kalafakia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate you. appreciate everybody else here. Uh, good evening. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, amazing city council folks, for us, CJRM, great citizens, folks that are watching online. Uh, I really appreciate everybody what they do for our city, making it better. I just wanted to talk today about uh, one issue that hasn't been addressed, and that's it's regarding uh, when you're traveling north down along toward the corner of Esperanza and Golden Hills meet. Uh, we got an amazing question center there. But we, and, and the people in the community that like to walk, that cross traffic there, there's just no lighting, there's no signal that's there. We've got horses crossing over. I uh, just witnessed the other day, I pulled over um, an individual that laid his bike down that curb. Uh, he was okay, you know, he's going to call an ambulance for him, but he's like, he's all right, so I was going to offer to put his motorcycle on my truck and take him home. But he's doing well. So, anyways, having said that, there's we can just take a look at that just that corner, that section there, because a lot of people do walks in the morning. I understand the lighting issue, but if this we can get a little stop sign, a, some solar, just something we can at least warn people on that curve that the others drive a little too fast. That's just one area that's there. And other than that, I appreciate what you guys do. I appreciate you taking care of uh, some great city employees that during COVID, our first responders that were out there, regardless of. Regardless of anything else, you can sacrifice their willing to sacrifice their life for the benefit of the city. So I support that. Thank you very much. Stay Thank you very much. Stay on the strong. <laughs> Thank you. Any other public comment? No further public comment. We'll come up for the dais. Council comments. Good terms. We'd like to start, Mr. Crosby. I can never work this, but I'm loud enough. Um, I just want to thank uh, the for our study session today, and for anybody that's out there watching, if you weren't able to make it to the 5 o'clock early meeting, uh, thank you. Uh, you can watch it. It'll be up on our, our website as well. And uh, it's on SB9. And there's a lot of great information, a lot of great public comments on it as well. And I uh, appreciate the city bringing that forward to us. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilmember Carter. Yes, this past Saturday, a uh, little uh, girl softball could not have an opening day because they had started to plan it back in November. But with COVID, they weren't sure what was going to happen. So, Tim and I both sit on the Youth Sports Council. And they were telling us that they're going to, they invited us out there to come out, see their first weekend of games. And both Tim and I showed up, and it was so impressive. And they had picture day, so it was really like an opening day. Lots of kids could park anywhere. You had to go down the street, remember that? <laughs> and, um, but one thing that I, we did talk to the president of their league, and they did so so gratefully, they were so pleased to hear what the city has done for them. They said when there's something to be done, we don't ask for it until we know we want it because it is done like that when we, they put in a request. The shade covers, if you get a chance, stop over there at Wheeler Park. I know Little League is always a big, you know, issue that people love Little League, but girls are always forgotten for softball. Stop over at Wheeler Park. See that some of the games, so impressive. The pitching nowadays is just impressive. They just, you know, whip it around. <laughs> and and, and it's, they need the support. Fundraising, please, when you see these kids come to your doors or if you hear about their fundraising, support them. You know, the, unfortunately with COVID, so many times the businesses supported them. But 
they need to be not hit on so often, the businesses. I think it's the community involvement in helping the kids fundraise for their sports. And as we all know, keeping kids involved in sports or any other activities keeps them out of trouble. So I was just so impressed and to hear how great our staff is doing. The shade covers they put over all the bleachers, and that was the doing of the city. So really pass that on, please, to Public Works and thank them. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, recap a couple things that happened over the last couple of weeks. Um, Mayor and I attended the Hillcrest uh, VIP event um, where it was an amazing art exhibit. It's still up if you want a chance to go see it. I mean, these I cannot say enough about how impressive these students are. And you know, much to um, Councilwoman Carter's point of view is that if we can get the students engaged in something, they stay out of trouble. They will find a purpose. They will find. Um, things to do, and I thought it was so cool to see um, all of these students get up there and not only have their artwork displayed, which was beautiful, but they got up and talked about why they drew what they drew, and you could tell with, for some of them that they were not used to speaking in public, and what an awesome opportunity for them to engage and to speak to a large audience, and the warmth that those students received from the group of people that sat and listened to them was amazing. And so if you get a chance, do go and see the artwork. It is truly amazing. Uh, it is for sale. They haven't all sold out already. Um, definitely take a look. There was some really cool stuff there. Um, uh, as mentioned previously as well, the Cultural Awareness and Social Inclusion Committee did just have a meeting last week. And I wanted to extend a big thank you to our Chief of Police, um, Colleen Flores, as well as um, Captain Sam Gonzalez and a bunch of other lieutenants who also attended that meeting. It was an awesome um, display. If you get the chance to watch it, I believe it is up on our website. Um, what I envision and what I would hope that people would get out of things like that is that we are a community that knows each other. And it was really kind of neat to hear some of the residents talk about some of their experiences, positive experiences with the police and what the police are doing to make our community safer and better. So if you don't have a chance to come to our meetings, please note they are up so you can watch them, um, but we would definitely welcome you to attend. So it was really, like I said, really amazing to see that, and I don't know how many cities have that kind of rapport or that kind of um, communication. So, And then last but not least, uh, it is Women's History Month. Tomorrow is International Women's Day. Um, International Women's Day was initially celebrated in 1911 by a handful of European countries, um, and it quickly spread across the globe to recognize the achievements of women. And uh, you know, I would be remiss not to say thank you to our staff, to my fellow councilwoman, and um, to all the people who come to these meetings. You know, we may not always agree, we may not always see eye to eye, but I think what's important is that dialogue and that communication, because if we don't have that, we're never going to see another perspective. We're never going to have the opportunity to say, hey, I didn't know that, let me learn more about it. So I appreciate the information that is brought forth, and I think that's, um, you know, that's leadership in your community, to take the time out of your Monday nights to come here religiously when you don't have to, it's huge. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being engaged in your communities and sharing out information and wanting to be that conduit because I think that's what makes us a truly amazing community. So um, with that, um, someone sent me a message earlier saying, can you believe that two years ago this was our last normal week <laughs> before the pandemic? Two years. You know, it is, it is crazy to think how much time has passed. Um, this past Sunday was the first time my dad was allowed out um, of the, not out to come home, but uh, was allowed to have visitors outside. And that's huge. He has been in and out of the hospital and, you know, the convalescent center for um, almost a year and a half. And so I really appreciate, you know, those of you that have continued to um, just build community in our city and to really be supportive. And again, even when we don't see eye to eye, I appreciate that. <coughs> so thank you. Um, be kind. That's it for me. Thank you, Councilman Mayor Pro Tem Davis. Thank you, Mayor. I, I want to uh, join the others in celebrating activities and discussions that we have in our community, both here and in our neighborhoods. Um, Likewise, uh, Cassie and the celebration and, and conversation that we had with Chief Flores and her staff um, 
This Wednesday, we're talking uh, Pomona Valley Transportation Authority, and this Saturday, um, the Little League opening day is going to commence. So, so we are returning to a new normal. Um, I, I likewise want to uh, suggest that it was it was a good conversation during the study session on SB State, uh, State uh, Senate Bill Nine about housing and development of housing. And, and there were several issues that were brought up that were around it that weren't necessarily directly related to SB9. And, it, and those conversations are as important to have and continue as well. It's not, we don't oftentimes deal with one issue at a time. We're dealing with a whole fabric of issues. And a, and a very good example is the other week we had the um, a special adjourned meeting to decide whether or not to continue negotiating with LA County to contract out our fire services. And I'm thrilled that after you know two plus years of conversation and discernment and angst and 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 I'll just say it, it it wasn't a graceful conversation, but it was a necessary conversation. It was necessary to reach out and gain people's participation, and and people stepped up and participated in that conversation to make sure that a good decision was made. So I'm thrilled to say that we came up with a good decision. Um, and I'm happy with it, and I'm glad we're able to move forward. And we'll have other thorny issues as we go into the future, so please don't hesitate. Let's discuss them. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Potem Davis. Uh, ditto to all that. That was, you guys pretty much covered all the bases for me tonight, but uh, yeah, yeah, we're almost, yeah. No, I just want to thank everybody. I want to thank our community, though, too, because as Customer Lau stated, you forget because we're all ingrained in what we're doing and, and COVID and and, and trying to, you know, with masking, non-masking, and vaccine and non-vaccine, and moving through the pandemic, and family members getting sick, and and most of us getting COVID, which you know I was I had a, I had it, but I had my three shots fine. But the point is, is that we've come a long way, and we actually it was March seventh, was it not, when we had our election, and we were installed on April sixth, I'm not mistaken, of two thousand and twenty. Can you believe that we're in 2022 in March? It's like, and now the masks are going away. I mean, on a, it, uh, the pandemic's not gone, but as far as I'm concerned, we're on a different plane than we were before. And uh, I, I just can't say enough about our community for helping us to succeed and survive. To our employees, I mean, without us all as a team, this would not have happened, I guarantee you. And I think we're all being extremely engaged. And now that you sports are back, as Councilman Ricardo stated, that is the best thing in the world to see. Families, the masks are gone, the kids are having a great time, they're eating, they're having fun, running around like little kids do. It, that noise is the most wonderful thing in all the world. And now Little League's starting up again uh, this Saturday. Pop Warner's rebuilding their teams, our football. It's like San Dimas Pop Warner and, and also ASO and the high school sports. And our, our high school is just rocking it out of the park right now with you know CIF with wrestling and water polo girls water polo, even the boys sports and track. It's just, you know, that's why we live here. You know, I keep saying that it's a great place to live, but without great residents and without great council and great city staff, this wouldn't happen. I also want to say that the uh, Saturday when we were at the uh, girls softball, you know, it's an effort between all the staff. I know that Sean Igo oversees all the parks, but without Yvonne Duran, our community services manager, and also Chad, which, and then his assistance and all of the department with our community center over here, it, it just wouldn't be the same. We have a great staff that really cares about these kids, cares about the youth, and cares about what we do in our community. And also Mr. Russi for making sure that everybody is in place and everybody's doing their jobs and making sure that the residents are taken care of. So on that, thank you all. Mr. Russi. We do have a need for a closed session to review the hearing officer's proposed decision on an employee disciplinary matter under Personnel Rule 5200F. After the closed session, the council will reconvene an open session to give a rendering on the final decision of that process. Will we do it out of closed session back in the days? You will yes. come back here. Okay. Then we will recess into closed session and we'll adjourn our meeting after we come back in closed session. We will recess. Yeah, you can let them know and then do the announcement. Oh, we will be recessing in the closed session, but our next scheduled council meeting is March 21st at 6 o'clock p.m. for a fire badge painting ceremony.
And don't forget to talk to Sherry about jelly. Oh, I already got one. <laughs> Turn up your grab it. Sherry. Sherry. Oh, oh, there you go. 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 Oh, there you go.